Tell us a little more about Mr. Palkewala. I've never seen a human being that tall. Forget the lawyer in him. I mean, as a lawyer, he was amazing. I've done so many cases with him. I've done tax cases with him. And the way he read a section, you went to him with a question, he read the section and you said, I don't need your answer, you've already answered it. So that, that was his capacity of analysis and his expression was marvelous. His skills, forensic skills were amazing. His advocacy skills were amazing. I mean, I noticed, I was young then, I noticed one thing very interesting. When he was arguing Minerva Mills, he put a proposition of law. And he'd get resistance from the judges. So he'd sort of get into his rhetoric and whip up the emotional side. He'd bring up and, you know, Gokhale's even famous speech about the court being a let and a hindrance. He'd get everybody's adrenaline flowing. And he'd put the same point of law and bang on, <laughs> it went in. So I said, wow, yeah, this is an amazing skill. I got to know him personally very well. Because after 1980, I did a number of matters with him. The famous Loya Machines case, which we argued in 1983, we worked together. And then I saw the personal side of Mr. Palkewala. And uh, my wife, he was very fond of my wife. And he visited our home. I, mean, I was a young lawyer at that time, but I invited him for dinner. He says, of course, I'll come. So he came for dinner and then when he, we were in Bombay, he called me over. And I must tell you what a man he was. We were appearing together in the income tax tribunal. I was appearing with him in a case for uh, the Singhanias, Raymond Mills. And he passed a slip to me. And I said, yes, sir, that is fine. And the solicitor leaned over and said, what is it? I said, no, Nani wanted some book and I told him it is here. The truth is he had passed me a slip saying, will Minakshi drink sherry? <laughs> Or will she have something else? And I said, no, that is fine. I mean, he is arguing a case on a complex point and he is worried about what drink he is going to offer my wife in the evening. That was, the, that was the human being in him. And the first time we visited his house, what an experience it was. We were sitting in his, he had a little terrace kind of a thing with a lot of greenery. And he told me, he says, I would have loved to call you for dinner, but uh, I'm going out. So you must come for a drink. I said, okay. So we went and sat down there and there was a bottle of Black Dog and a bottle of Black Label and a bottle of Sherry kept. Then his servant came and kept some French cheese and biscuits. And five minutes later, Mr. Palkewala came, he was in the shard and he came and sat down next to us. And he, picked, he would always pour the drink. So he picked up the bottle of Black Dog and said, Harish, I remember you're telling me you like smoky whiskeys. And I said, sir. And he said, this is a nice whiskey, try this. So he poured me, and he used to pour generous portions. So he poured me a drink, he poured my wife a glass of sherry, he poured himself a small whiskey, and he sat down. And he's talking to us, and he was an amazing conversationalist, you know, full of stories, full of anecdotes. And he pulled the plates towards himself. So he's talking to us, and he's opened the cheese, he's opened the crackers, he's put the cheese on the cracker. And the next thing I know is the cracker is here. <laughs> next to my mouth. And there was a question of saying no to Nani. And I think between my wife and me, he fed us that whole platter of crackers and cheese. But that was the affection of the man. You know? Then after that, many times he went to his house for dinner. And invariably, he'd seat you at the head of the table. He'd never sit at the head of the table. He'd seat you at the head of the table. He always served my wife himself. He always poured the drink. And when we left, he would come out, not only open his flat door, he would call for the elevator, he would come down with us. Once when I was staying at the Oberoi, he walked us to the Oberoi. Once or once or twice when I had a car, I'd call for the car, he would open the car door. And the third or fourth time when this happened, I was so overwhelmed. That, you know, and we were getting into the car and I just, I, I virtually got tears in my eyes and I said, sir, I, I can't even thank you. And my wife also, you know, she was overwhelmed. And she said, sir, I mean, I, I, we don't even know what to say. So he pulled my cheek and said, uh, you don't have to say anything to me. You know, when I first saw your husband, at that time, he was this much above sea level. <laughs> He's a very dear friend's son. He's like my own child. This was a man. 
and i have learned humility lessons of humility lessons of what a human being should be we can only aspire to be something like that so about your initial years at the supreme court you worked at the chambers of sori sarab ji um what do you think about the system of mentorship at the supreme court soli always had juniors and he was a marvelous senior when i went first to interview for an interview he is in his parsi marathi he told me tel kadin me to i'll take you know oil sort of squeeze oil out of you and i replied to him in marathi kara se pushkare you know please go ahead there's lots of oil to take out he was true to his word <laughs> he worked you to the bone but it was a glorious experience working with him he was a friend we, we shared a passion for jazz and he was amazing and he was always willing to hear that maybe he's thinking wrong he was always willing to hear that maybe you had a good point so he was not one of those intellectual jazz who sort of put his juniors down i mean he was short tempered he, he could never any even in now I, he can't suffer fools but having said that if he respected you and he always had immense affection and respect for me he was he was fantastic i mean there have been juniors who sort of left because they couldn't handle his pace in his is and solely worked at a hard pace worked at a fast pace if he pushed you hard he pushed himself hard and it's it's always fantastic when you're training with somebody who pushes you hard because that brings the best out of you and conversation the thing i was telling you always had to be staccato you know very short on patience so you have to if you said and said solely i have to tell you something yes so you have to say three things you have to say that in advance so okay first so you tell this okay second oh, okay third <laughs> okay bye that's the man and it was a wonderful experience working with him so so some something today i think it's a very large measure if not entirely because of what i learned at his chambers reflecting back on these experiences what do you think about the system of mentorship right now in the supreme court relationship between the senior bar and the junior bar i think it is uh, pretty good i think there are a lot of seniors who do take juniors mr venugopal takes them i think rajiv dhawan takes them and a lot of the seniors take juniors and a lot of them uh, i maybe we get it perspective from our perch i think most of them are pretty good to their juniors so i think it's uh, working pretty well with the top seniors beyond that i really can't say 